Hello, hello, welcome and greetings to you in the awesome name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. You know, David in the book of Psalms said, This is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice and be glad in it. It is so great to know that God has spared our lives one more time to see another day. And for that, I am ever thankful. I'm ever grateful. I am Minister Durrett, and I welcome you one more time to my YouTube channel. Today, I will be visiting an old story from the scriptures, the book of Jonah, Jonah the prophet, in regards to the people of Nineveh. And as I go through this story, what I would like you to do is to pray and ask God to show you even though the story um, was taken many a long time ago, but I want you to, to ask God to show you what role and what position do you play? Where do you see yourself in today's modern world in this story? This story is about Jonah and the people of Nineveh. We know that Nineveh was the capital of the Syrian Empire. And Nineveh was a very, very wicked um, um, country with um, the Gentile population of one, over 120,000 people. They were wicked, very vile. They were, um, they were corrupt, violent, ruthless, and they carried out very savage behaviors. And the scripture said Nineveh was a great city in that they were very powerful and full of sin. And they were so powerful in that they did not fear man. They did not fear animals. They did not fear even the God of Israel. They spoke harsh word against the God of Israel. Not only were they powerful, but they were Israel's arch enemy. For many years, they oppressed and suppressed the people of Israel that they became, the feud between them was unbreakable. It wasn't able to be mended. And so it was ironic that God told Jonah, go to the city of Nineveh and I want you to preach to these people because their wickedness have come up before me. Their sins have come up before me. But I want to do something different for them. I want to spare their lives. I want to uh, bring them and embrace them and show them my love. However, Jonah, who was a man of God, a prophet of God, said, Wait a minute, God. You, you, you can't be serious about saving my arch enemy you can't be serious about saving these people so jonah was totally in disagreement with god's plan to save and to rescue these people from doom because jonah knew the god that he served the god that says i will have mercy on whomever i will have mercy and i will have compassion on whom i will have compassion and so he refused to allow God's grace and God's mercy to be bestowed upon the people of Nineveh. Johnny refused to see God's will be done in, the, in their lives. No, God, these people are vile. These people are evil. These people are sinful. These people are thieves and fornicators and adulterers and they're rebels and they're prostitutes and they're liars and everything that is unholy and everything that is ungodly are these people if you save them he will allow them to perhaps return and and persecute us even more and and apply more pressure to us and intensify the pain and the hurt that we are already experienced this is a man of god <laughs> after reasoning within himself he came to a strong decision that God should judge, punish, and severely um, get rid of the people of Nineveh. What we need to understand is that Jonah was selfish. We need to understand that Jonah need a better understanding. 
of the deep love that God has towards all men. Today, as believers in Christ, what is our views? What is your opinion? And what is my um, opinion? What lens are we looking at the world at? A world that is lost. Are we saying, come Lord Jesus, come and wipe these people out? Are we saying, Lord, get rid of them because sin has increased? The heart of men has become desperately wicked. Are we saying, Lord, they have gossiped against me. They have rejected me. They have embarrassed me. Lord, they, are, they have treated me unfairly. They have done such evil against me, Lord. Father, get rid of them. Get rid of my enemy. Is that the position? Is that our view that we have of the world? And the people that are unsaved around us as believers? Are we refusing to say that where sin abound, grace does much more abounding? And are we not willing to join with the great commission that God commissioned us to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature? This is the word of the true and living God because God wants to save mankind. He said, it's not for the moral and the righteous that he came for. There is a story in the book of Luke chapter five, where a Republican by the name of Matthew, who was a tax collector, he invited Jesus to his house and he welcomed Jesus into his home and he um, had a great feast for Jesus and so other tax collectors came to the feast that he had um, uh, provided for Jesus and they were drink, eating and drinking and being merry and so the, the, the Pharisees and all the other religious community came and they saw what Jesus was socializing with these people and, and, and Jesus had a great conversation a great time with these people and they complained and they said, the religious community complained against Jesus and his disciples for eating and being merry with tax collectors. They wanted to rebuke Jesus and his disciples. We must understand that tax collectors were not favorable people in those days. Those were the people that were full of greed. They cheated their fellow men of their money. They financially raped them. They were tax collectors. They collected more than they should and they pocketed the rest. They were, they had lived lavish lifestyles and, and so they, they overtaxed the people of their time. So they were excommunicated from the rest of the Jewish society and they were looked down upon. But Jesus, when they tried to rebuke Jesus, this is what Jesus said in Luke chapter 5, verse 31. He said, Jesus answered and said to them, those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Jesus came to call sinners to repentance. Jesus is still calling sinners to him. We must understand that sin is not a problem for God because it, sin is already dealt with at the cross. God provided Jesus Christ, his atoning blood at Calvary's cross, dealt with sin. But God is calling mankind the call is now for mankind to accept the finished work of Calvary's cross. So while dealing with his own biases, Jonah finally went into Nineveh and Jonah preached the word of God to these people, these vile and evil and wicked people that they need to repent. If you don't repent, this is what's going to happen. Doom is going to be doom and gloom is going to be your lot. And so when they heard the message of Jonah, the entire city of Nineveh 
the entire um, popul the people of Nineveh, they went into three days prior, three days prior and fasting. And they repented from their sins. And so God, the doom that was pronounced against them, God removed that doom from them because they repented wholeheartedly to God. Wholeheartedly they did. Today, we're living in modern Nineveh. This is a world of modern Nineveh. And God's wrath and doom is still living against this world. But thanks be to Jesus for his grace and thanks be to God for his mercy that is still in operation to us today. So God is a people person. God is appealing to mankind to come unto me. He said that, it's not his will that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God right now, just like how he offered the people of Nineveh a way of escape, is today offering us a way of escape. He said those that believe in him and receive him, to them he gave the power to become the children of God. God is long-suffering. And God is patient and he's loving, he's merciful, and God is forgiving. God is here for you. And he has opened a way, a way of escape. He said, how shall we escape if we neglect such great a salvation? God has provided the remedy for us. And we are living in the time of grace, but we don't know when that period will come to an end. So I'm here today. And as I asked, I mentioned earlier, to ask yourself the question, ask God, where do I stand in this story? Am I Jonah the prophet who is selfish and wants to see my enemies be destroyed? Or am I one of the people in Nineveh that's heard the word of God and decided I am going to repent of my sins and I'm going to turn from the wrath to come. Where are you in this story? That is the question. And only God knows where you are in this story. So today I want to pray for those that know God and are refusing to Release the word of God and proclaim the good news to those that are in need of it. And also to those that our unsaved loved ones who do not know Jesus, but need, they need to know him as their Lord and Savior. So let me just pray and believe God that he will do a work in all of us today. Loving Father, I thank you for your precious grace. I thank you that you love us, that you sent Jesus to die in our stead. And Father, as Jesus came proclaiming your word to a dying world, Lord, you have left us the mandate to go into all the world and preach the gospel. Father, as believers, we don't want to be like Jonah who refuse to preach your word to those that are lost. We're saying, forgive us, Lord, for the times that we fail to mention and proclaim your word to those that would need to hear a word from you. So, Father, we're repenting of those times and we're saying, God, help us, Lord, not to be like Jonah, but help us, oh God, to as we experience your grace, that we will show them that you are merciful and you're gracious, Lord, and you will ever forgive them too, as long as they're willing to obey and be obedient to you, Lord. So Father, forgive us and cleanse us and help us to move forward in you, Lord, to preach your word to a world that is in need of you. And mighty God, today, even those, Lord, that don't know you, in the story, O oh God, of the people of Nineveh, God, they were vile and they were evil and they were wicked. Oh God, they were detestable, Lord. Oh, great God Almighty. Oh, but we're so grateful and thankful, Lord, for your word. For God so loved the world. Lord, even in our sin, 
even with our sin sick souls oh god you're still calling and you're still pleading for you love us oh the love of god father i think there is a a song that says it chases me down fights till i am found lord you you search for me lord the reckless love of god it is your love that is calling us to you lord and we want, oh God, the, those that don't know you to experience that love, oh God, of you. So we're asking you to touch their heart, Lord. Remove them, oh God, from, from the clutches, oh God, of the enemy and turn their hearts to Jesus. Give them a heart to know you, oh God, and give them a mind to desire you, Father God. Oh God, only you alone can rescue and deliver. No man, no woman, no system, oh God, can deliver mankind. Father God, because you got the whole world in your hand. And Father, as you have the whole world in your hand, I'm asking you to minister, Lord. Let your word come to the hearts of those that don't know you that they will also know you as their personal savior, that they will have a heart of repentance to know you, Lord. Father, thank you, Lord, for mercy and grace. Thank you for loving us, oh God, even in our despair and in our desperate situation, in our sin, oh God, you're still embracing us. So I thank you, Lord. Bless them as they tune in today, Lord. And may the power of the cross reach their heart today in the mighty name of Jesus. The message is still clear. God is still calling man and woman to him. God is still calling us and he still, he has mandated the church to go out into all the world and preach the gospel. And this is what we want to do. We are God's hands and, and feet extended. And this is what we will forever do until he returns. So if you're listening to this channel, I ask you to revisit this story again and even go into the book of Jonah and read it over and ask God to reveal himself to you because you want to come into a relationship with you and may God bless you as you do so. If you do enjoy this channel, I ask of you to press the subscribe button. And may I say to you, I am Minister Durette, and I thank you once again for tuning in. And I want to remind you to get connected and stay connected with Christ. God bless you and have an awesome day.